Well, Christmas as a child was, was awesome. It was, it was crazy, but it was awesome. My, my little sister Megan would come barreling into my room before it was dawn, sometimes as early as 4 a.m., to let me know, Larry, it's Christmas. As if I didn't know. Go back to bed for a little while. But of course, we couldn't do that. We had to go and wake up our parents, which we thought always would lead straight to running downstairs and all of the surprises and goodness that waited there. But my dad was a man of great routine. And that daily routine had to happen even on Christmas morning. So we would have to stay in mom and dad's room while he showered. I swear on work days, he could shower in five or six minutes, but it took an hour on Christmas morning. (laughs) Then he would go downstairs and have to start coffee. Again, I don't know that a coffee maker has ever taken as long as our coffee maker did on Christmas morning. And then after what seemed like an eternity, he would yell for us finally to come downstairs. And I can remember the sheer exhilaration of flying down the stairs and the excitement as we saw our Christmas tree surrounded by gifts. Uh, we'd share in gifts from Santa. My sister and I would, sh- would exchange gifts and uh, we would, uh, uh, with one another and, and gifts that we got from mom and dad. We'd tear into our stockings. It was absolutely awesome. But then there was more. Soon after we were done at our house, we'd pile into our car and we'd head over to Granny and Papa's house. There our uncles and our aunts and all of our cousins would be gathering. Granny made a huge, huge breakfast. And then more gifts. It was awesome. It was the best part of the day. But wait, there's more. After we finished there, we'd pile into the car again and we'd head over to Grandma Frank's house. There my cousins on my dad's side of the family were waiting. We'd eat a huge Christmas dinner and guess what there was after that? More gifts. It, it was awesome. And, and nowadays I think about the huge amount of coordination and scheduling that it took to pull off all of those three events and get the timing just right. And uh, I chuckle how it was just like an infomercial, but wait, there's more. Gifts, gifts, and more gifts. I'd give a lot now to go back to those mornings as a kid when life just seemed simpler and full of magic, you know, before life happened. Tonight is a night of gifts, but not just any gift. It's the gift of Jesus coming to planet Earth. But in, for the sake of nostalgia, I think I'd trade every material gift that I've ever received for just one more of those Christmas mornings as a kid. And maybe it's more than, than nostalgia, because I've discovered that, that my life in the love of Jesus is like a gift within a gift that contains, guess what? Another gift. The gift of Jesus' love is, is like the Jelly of the Month Club. It's from my favorite movie, Christmas Vacation. You get a one-year subscription to the Jelly of the Month Club. Clark, that's the gift that keeps on giving the whole year. Except the gift of Jesus' love is, is vastly better than that. So tonight, on this holy night, we're going to look at just one verse together from the Gospel of John. It's from John chapter 1, verse 16. Would you help me out and read it with me? For from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. Grace upon grace. The gift of Jesus' love is like those early Christmas mornings with gathering after gathering, gift after gift. It's grace upon grace. But what is grace? Maybe we should talk about it since our our church is named after it, uh, actually. Uh, It's this incredible no strings attached love from God just for you. The, The Bible tells us that God was so crazy in love with the world that he created that he sent Jesus our way. But to really make your head spin, it's about it's about something even more personal than the world. God is so crazy about you that he sent Jesus down to earth. Jesus is God's live demonstration of love for us. Nobody's ever seen God, but everything good and awesome about God is perfectly reflected in Jesus. Picture this, Jesus has been around with God since the the beginning, celebrating with God everything that was created. In the very beginning of our Bibles, in Genesis chapter 1, every time something is created, God looks at it and says, this is good. This is good. It's good. And then he says, let us make humanity in our own image. And he said that human beings were very good. Jesus has been there. Fast forward to Christmas, we're we're here cheering because God did this mind-blowing thing. 
He sent Jesus down to live among regular folks on our sin-stained planet. For 33 years, Jesus got what it meant to be human. When he hit 30, he kicked off this movement of changing lives that still lives today. He gathered around himself this ragtag crew of followers, and he went around announcing a new kingdom, a kingdom of God where he was Lord, and wherever Jesus is king, things get set right. And here's the thing that our culture struggles with that, that we proclaim tonight. The life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus aren't some made-up story. They're fact that are etched into history, turning the, the heads of the Roman government in Jesus' day because the phrase in, in Jesus' day was that Caesar is Lord. He got everybody's attention when people started saying, no, Jesus is Lord. So the big shots got jittery and they hatched a plan to nail him to a cross. But God had this rescue mission in motion already and he used this wild moment of his son being nailed to a cross to pull off something way bigger than anyone could ever grasp. Jesus sacrificing himself was this rescue mi mission to save us from the dark mess that sin brought into the world and messed with God's perfect plan. But on the third day, bam, Jesus is raised from the dead. He showed up to a crowd, and, and, and even though the, the Roman authorities tried to keep it hush-hush, the news spread like wildfire. And that small gang of Jesus followers went from scaredy cats to bold disciple makers, turning the world upside down. And we know that because we're here tonight. We can dive into the life-changing connection with God through a living Jesus. It's as simple as unwrapping the incredible gift that, that God has handed to us. So we've waited long enough. The whole time I've been talking, there's been a gift sitting here. And someone in here has wondered, what the heck's going on with that? So we're going we're gonna to see what we've, what we've got going on here tonight. Grace in my past. The first gift that, that we discover on Christmas is that God has been with us our whole life. Whether you know it or not, God has been with you your entire life. There's no moment of your life that God has not loved you, that, that God has not been hoping that you will embrace his love and open the gift. God has been blessing you every day of your life with simple things to awaken you to his love. In our Wesleyan stream of Christianity, we talk about grace that goes before. Even before I was aware of God's existence, much less God's love for me, God was working to show me who he is and how much he loves me. All good things and blessings in your life come from him. And when we open this gift, we discover a past full of love, even in the midst of difficulty. And this is really good news. Because if you're anything like me, sometimes you look back at the past with regret and pain. You ever felt that way? I don't want to talk about the past. When it came to my past, I always felt like I was in the movie Jurassic Park. Here's what I saw in the rearview mirror. It was like I was being chased by my past. And, and there's this, the, the thing when you look at that is objects and mirror are closer than they appear. You try outrunning the T-Rex of your past. The monsters in the mirror for me were fears and questions, hurts and hangups. I always felt like I was having to do more, to be more, to keep up, to succeed, to, to be better. And it was just like being chased by a T-Rex. But when I open this gift of grace in my past, I find that God has been chasing me with goodness and grace. Even in the hard moments, even in those T-Rex moments, God was in the background working to use even those painful parts of my story to bring me to a deeper awareness of his presence. In the midst of one of the worst times of my life, a friend cared enough about me to invite me to a week of church camp. And, and there I learned that God used that friendship to bring me to himself. And as I came to him, I learned that all of those painful things in my life, God had been using to prepare me for that moment. Christmas points us to grace in the past. When Mary and Joseph traveled to the little town of Bethlehem, the, the town of King David, they had no idea what God was up to. But God had been working in, in that place and in human history all along for that to be the birthplace of Jesus. So we have grace in our past. But here's the cool thing. Like those Christmas mornings where I, there was one uh, gift after another, there's another here. This one says grace in my future. 
That's good news too, because if you ever felt like you're being chased by a T-Rex of your past, uh, you might also have anxiety about tomorrow. Uh, I'm not one of those people who's wired to look forward to tomorrow. Why? Because I'm worried about it. And, and I'm not alone. Uh, our, our, your pastors looked at a bunch of surveys uh, about the future, and a vast majority of people of all ages are worried. Whether they're worried about finances, but we're not going to talk about that on Christmas Eve, or the war in the Middle East, but we're not going to talk about that on Christmas Eve either, or politics, we're definitely not going to talk about that on Christmas Eve. Whatever it is, we're worried about the future. But when the angel comes to the shepherds, the angel says, good news of Jesus' arrival will bring, will bring future good news of great joy to all people, that the Savior, the Messiah, the Lord has been born. Not just in ancient Bethlehem and to night watch shepherds, this gift of love and grace and forgiveness will bring joy to all people in all times at all places. The Messiah, the Savior of the world came to earth for you. I can face those anxieties about tomorrow with a lot more courage when I know that. When you realize that there's grace even in your future, then you know that there is nothing that can defeat you. There's nothing to fear because we know the one who holds tomorrow in his hand. I, listen, I've read the end of the story. I know that Jesus wins. And yes, he comes and he dies on a cross, but he doesn't stay dead. God raises him to new life and Jesus promises his followers that we'll have this new life as well. Don't worry throughout the game of life. Jesus has all ready one. And what we look forward to, we've been celebrating these days of Advent, celebrating the coming of Jesus. We're also waiting for a second Advent when Jesus comes again. And the first time he came, it was in a manger in Bethlehem and not that many people paid attention. But when he comes back, everybody will know because disease and sin and, and, and all sorts of bondages and cancers and, and addiction will all be wiped out. All things will be set right in final victory. He came as a baby, but now is alive as Lord and master of the universe. And he can be alive in your heart. And when I know that I know there will be grace in my future. Okay, we have time for one last gift before you all feel like I've been talking long enough that it's Christmas morning. So what, what could this last one be? It's a, uh, it's a smaller one, grace upon grace. This one says, grace in my present grace in my present. This is also fantastic news, not just the, about the love that God has for us uh, manifested through Jesus uh, extending into our past and giving us hope for the future, but this grace encompasses even this current moment. When, when the shepherds were visited by an angel from the Lord, fear gripped them. However, the angel comforted them and said, I bring you good news. And for, and for them, this was the first taste of good news. In that instant, they experienced the grace of God firsthand. Although God's grace had been present in their past and God promised to be with them in the future, they were acutely aware that right now there's a precious gift. Uh, and it's a really great story because they get up right now, they look at each other and say, okay, let's go. And they run into Bethlehem and they start knocking on doors. Who's got a baby in here? And, and they go and they become the first to share this news. Listen, for, uh, for you to receive a gift, a gift is incomplete until two things happen. First, it has to be given. But then you have to receive it. The shepherds wholeheartedly embrace the gift of Jesus' presence right in the present moment. My great-grandma Stevens would always come and see us at, at Thanksgiving time. She didn't always uh, make it for Christmas, so she would bring our gifts for Christmas at Thanksgiving. So the gift was given. But then they would sit under our Christmas tree for weeks, and it was torture, absolute torture. We couldn't wait to see what Grandma got us on Christmas morning because we had to wait that long. She gave the gift. It was always there. It was present. But we had to receive it. We had to open it. So the question tonight is, will you invite Jesus into your life? The shepherds transformed into eyewitnesses and became the inaugural messengers of the birth of the king. Uh, their, their status went, underwent a profound change and granted them a new identity. And you too, in this present moment, can experience that same transformation. 
Right now, in this moment, you have the opportunity to embrace Jesus and his love for you. You, you can navigate with confidence, recognizing yourself as a son or daughter of the Most High God. And, and this has all sorts of implications for us, influencing how we engage with each moment of our lives. Jesus exists in the present moment now. It, it's so easy to become preoccupied with the past or worried about the future that we lose sight of the present. But we shouldn't just encounter Jesus in a distant past or an anticipated future, but he's here right now, Emmanuel, God with us. And embracing him, though there are still moments when, when I falter, that brings relief from the fears and allows me to fully embrace the forgiveness and freedom that he extends. In the present moment, I discover a steadfast friend who, who never disappoints me. No matter what I've been through, no matter what's coming my way, right now, at this very moment, Jesus is Lord and that's good news. Tonight we sang joy to the world and the strange thing is the song says joy to the world, the Lord is come. Not has come or will come, the Lord is come. Because Jesus lives in the right now. He says, I am, over and over in the gospel of John, I am the bread of life, I am the light of the world, I'm the resurrection and the life, not I used to be or I'm going to be, I am. So in this moment tonight, you can welcome Jesus and accept his gift of love for you. You can live life with a new confidence as a son or daughter of the Most High. This changes things, including our ability to live each moment of life in a new way. When we understand this gift in our present, we begin to receive a, a gift of a new identity. One of the things that I've been able to, to adopt into my teaching ministry since coming to Grace Church is this thing called COGPOW. Child, child of God, person of worth. And it's a great thing that we need to be reminded of right now in this present moment. You're a child of God, a person of worth. What I love about that identity is you can't go bankrupt from being a, chi a child of God, a person of worth. You can't be divorced from being a cog pal. You can't get laid off from being a cog pal. No illness, no diagnosis can keep you from being a cog pal. No breakup, no breakdown can keep you from being a cog pal. No anxiety, no fear, no worry, no panic attack can keep you from being a cog pal. No relationship trouble, no addiction, no affliction, no hurt, habit, or hang up can keep you from being a cog pal. You are a child of God and a person of worth. What can separate us from the love of God and Jesus? The Bible says nothing can. Nothing can take away your status as a child of God, a person of worth. So, so, so here it is. Today, in just a moment, I want to invite you to consider receiving these gifts of grace into your life. From him, from his fullness, we've received grace upon grace. The Bible declares the good news that God so loved the world that he sent Jesus to us. And for this to impact our soul, not just in, in some past or in an anticipated future, but right now, I want you to personalize that and know that God so loved you that Jesus came to earth. And we experience his grace by having a personal relationship with Jesus and his spirit present with us now. So I'm gonna close our, our message tonight with, with a prayer. It's, it's, it's a really simple prayer. We're just gonna say thanks, sorry, and please. And, and I think this is, this is, for, this is for two groups. Uh, if, you're, if you're here tonight and maybe you don't even know why you're here, but you'd like to begin a relationship with Jesus for the first time, this prayer's for you. Or if you've been drifting in your spiritual life and you need to renew your relationship with Jesus, this prayer's for you too. Three simple things to focus on. Thanks, sorry, please. So I'm gonna pray and you can just repeat this along in your heart. Let's pray. Jesus, first, we wanna say thanks for coming this Christmas with grace, grace, and more grace. Thanks that this grace includes your gift of dying on a cross for my sin, forgiving me and giving me a new identity as a cog pal. Jesus, today I also want to say sorry. How sorry I am for the things I've done wrong in my life that hurt me, hurt others, the things that break your heart. Lord Jesus, would you please come into my soul, my heart, and live in my life. 
Please help me to trust you to lead my life in a new direction filled with joy where I understand and begin to experience that your grace has always been there. Grace upon grace in my past, in my future, and in this very moment. Amen. When we open God's gifts this Christmas, we find the very presence of Jesus. We find a friend, we find a savior. We don't find a set of beliefs that we have to adhere to as much as a person that we can relate to. Jesus is present with us today, right now, in this moment through the Holy Spirit. We can't physically see things like, like, like love or anger or compassion the same way we can't physically see the presence of Jesus. But just like love, anger, compassion are real, we can sense Jesus' presence and experience him much in the same way. So here's, here's the takeaway tonight. This is the whole thing in one sentence. Would you help me out and say it with me? This Christmas, Jesus offers me the gift of grace and more grace. That's what it boils down to, Cogpal. You've been offered grace and more grace. Child of God, person of worth, son or daughter of the most high, you are incredibly loved by the king of the universe. And you've never been more loved than you are in this very moment. He's been there in your past. He promises grace in your future, but he's with you right now. Receive that gift. We're gonna share together in, uh, in Holy Communion now. It's one of the ways that we've been given to, to celebrate this grace that's been uh, given to us. We, we, we remember towards the end of Jesus' ministry as he gathered with his, his closest friends in the upper room and they, they shared together in a simple meal with deep meaning. And he gave us this thing to continue to do that when we break this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim that Jesus is with us and we proclaim his death until he comes again. So tonight we're gonna, we're gonna receive communion and we're gonna retell that story. Just as Kip started us off helping us remember the story in Luke 2, we're gonna remember the fullness of the story and grace upon grace. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he blessed it, and he broke it. He said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup of wine. He gave it to his disciples. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it and remember me. Lord Jesus, we pray that you would send the Holy Spirit right now on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us truly the body and blood of Christ in this present moment as we experience your grace and send us out into the world to be your hands and your feet. It's in the name of Christ that we pray, amen. I'd like to invite those who are helping to serve to come forward. Uh, in, in just a moment when the music starts playing, uh, we'll have you uh, uh, come forward and you'll be given a piece of bread and a, and a small cup. Uh, it's grape juice here. This is a table that's safe for everyone to come to. And as we celebrate the presence of Jesus uh, with us.